perfect. Um, Trinity Sunday. Um, enter to description. Um, Trinity. Times the creator, the beamer, and the stainer. Six, one to eight. Share to a page, and I want to share to. And they make United Church. Well, this is going to be interesting. Okay, I'm going to go. Whew, let's try it. Well, well, well. I think we're live. We are live. Good morning. Hello, humans. Humans. Oh, lovely. I love a good human. That is good. That is good. Speaking of loving a good human, Kel, give us a joke. Oh, give us a joke. All oh, right. Oh. Who knew we'd be back at uh, joke sharing to welcome us into worship again, hey? Just, uh, lockdown has its perks. It actually does really and deeply have its perks. Um, Carol, you're with us. We're also going to expect a joke from you in a couple of minutes. That is true, actually. Carol, if you are here, then we do expect a joke from you very shortly. Uh, please be ready to share with us a beautiful joke. Um, that would be great. Uh, so first off, let us kick off with, oh, sorry, I'm just trying to read. <laughs> oh, what did one wall say to the other wall? Oh, so something about uh, keeping me up or you're in a corner or something. <laughs> I'll meet you at the corner. Yes, that's it. Yes. <laughs> uh, um, 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 what do you call a cow with only two legs? Uh, a mushroom? I don't know. Lean beef. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah. I thought so. Ah, uh, Jay, hello, welcome. I'm so glad that you're tuning in all the way from Alice Springs. You. I'm excited. I'm tuning in from your office, so it's nice that you're here. Hello, Shaz. How are you? Oh, Carol, I'm so glad that you're here too. So definitely uh, pop a joke in when you're ready. That would be good. Um, I know we've put you on the spot. We haven't actually given you time to prep for Sunday morning jokes again. But um, Zach, did you have a joke? Sure. Knock, knock. Who's there? Ice cream. Ice cream who? Ice cream right now if you don't let me in. Oh. <laughs> That's really bad. Yeah, no. I should not laugh at that. That's so bad it's good. <laughs> yeah, legit. <laughs> okay, oh, that's knock, funny. Knock. Who's there? Art. Art who? Art who D2. Oh, that's a good one. I appreciate that. Oh, Shaz, I'm really glad that you're good. That is good. Um, ooh, another joke, another joke. Um, oh, why can't you give Elsa a balloon? Because she'll let it go. Yeah, I thought you'd appreciate that one, Zach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Stopwatch. Stopwatch who? Stop what you're doing and let me in. Oh. <laughs> Oh, these are really good ones. I like them. Hey, Mark and Jeff. Oh, you're in Portland. It's nice that you are still tuning in. Good morning. And hey, Alison, thank you for your blessing. Um, 
Alison knows, and so does Jay, and of course, Zach, that this is my first time. I'm going to be coordinating our awesome tech of Zoom worship because usually Jay manages that amazing button clicking and sharing. So this is going to be fun and please send me all that good spirit vibes my way so so that we get the clicking all good and happening. Zach, did you have another joke? Uh, no, I just um trying to mop up a church online shaped mess. Oh, yes. So Zach is still getting church online going. Phil, hello. Um, oh, we have captions, Shaz. That's awesome. I am glad. That is good. That is good. Carol, good morning. I don't really understand. I'm going to share one more joke with you all while we're waiting for Church Online to connect. Oh, can a kangaroo jump higher than the Empire State Building? Yes, because the Empire State Building can't jump. Yes. How did you know that joke? I've never heard of it before. I've heard it several times. Oh, man. This is why you're the children's worker and I am not. <laughs> this is why I'm also the joke master. Very true. Um, why did the maths book look so sad? Oh, hold on. No, 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 I forgot. <laughs> because it has so many problems. Oh, yes, very good. <laughs> Man. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm glad Bruce also knew the answer to that, but Marg, Marg needed some convincing and is really impressed that you knew the answer to that question, Zach, so I'm glad. Thanks, yeah. Now we still <laughs> have no church. We have people who are joining church online. We just have no video there. Oh, yes. Well, how about we um, give it another, ooh, what's the time? I might jump right into playing our intro and then I'll that way we can back. get it working. And so sit back and enjoy our music to begin and we'll wait for everyone else to join in to start worship today.
So let us begin, of course, uh, with a moment to um, open the word of God and light um, the candle that represents Christ with us. And so if you happen to have scripture with you at home, then please do that. And if you happen to have a candle with you, then take a moment to light that, to acknowledge Christ's presence with each of us wherever we gather across the vast um, areas that we seem to be meeting from. While we do that, it is important, especially during uh, Reconciliation Week, that we acknowledge the land that we rest on, um, particularly land that has not uh, been treated with our First Peoples. Uh, so let's take a moment to acknowledge this land that is God's land where God's spirit dwells and that we acknowledge the people of the Kulin Nation, which is where Marambina Uniting rests, and the traditional custodians of this land under God and also the lands of all the peoples that we meet across wherever we are sitting at the moment. And we commit ourselves again to working for reconciliation in this land. So welcome, welcome to Worship Online. I am Kelly and Zach is also here. If you are tuning in for the first time at Marambina, um, I am the youth and young adults pastor here. Zach is the children's worker and you will see him uh, throughout the service when he tunes in as well. Um, Jay is currently on leave, which is beautiful and lovely and also probably not going to the best plans as Jay and Bruce would like, but I can assure you that they are getting some rest and that is good and they are also here. So if you would like to chat with them and check up on them, then they you can chat to them in the window. So just give them a hello and they can reply, I am sure. So as we begin, as always, let us take a moment to share the peace with one another. And so today, rather than waving as we usually do, between the pews, let us send a text message or turn to those between us in our households if we are with other people um, and share with them the peace of the risen Christ be with you all and also with you. And also with you. Thank you, Zach. And so let us share that peace with one another. And so while you finish sharing that peace with those who you know, let us share in our call to worship. The eternal one, holy, 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 to the one who sees us through three, there is no place that is absent from you. With time, within time and without time, you continue to be and to come. You are both and all what has happened what is happening and what will happen, the source of all things holy and whole. It is no wonder we come together to worship you, week in, week out, day in, day out, breathe in, breathe out. You, creator, everything our eye can see is why we worship you. Redeemer, every passionate act of justice, we remember you on that cross and we worship. Sustainer, even when we feel so far apart, your life is what fills our veins and we worship. There is no other God like you. To the three who we see as one, let us come together from afar and continue our worship. So let us sing together. Come now is the time to worship. Let us join in wherever we are.
So let us take a moment to pray and say our prayers of adoration and confession. Let's pray. O oh God, even as we celebrate your unity, we know that sometimes we forget the depth of your wonder. We hold majestic your ways as creator, but yet we manage sometimes to keep distant the challenges you give us as Christ the truth teller. Holy, holy, holy are you that we bow before your glory and yet we continue to keep the reality of your humanness away because it is too close for comfort and our own lives may be asked to do something about it. Forgive us, Redeemer. Move us, Sustainer. Love us, Creator. When we attempted to think we know it all, and that there is not one more ounce of mystery to explore. Forgive us for being foolish. Help us from closing ourselves off from the ideas that continue to delve us deeper into wonder. Forgive us, Redeemer, move us, Sustainer, and love us, Creator. This we pray in faith, and what else can we say toward this continuous and unchanging love and forgiveness other than thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Zach, you are going to be sharing with us our Bible reading for this morning. I am indeed. Let us gather around God's word and hear from Isaiah 6, 1 to 8. A vision of God in the temple. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. 
The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me. In this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And from here, Zach, it is right back to you again because we're going to jump right back into Murrumbini's. Excellent. Let me just uh, adjust this. No, I think we're okay for a moment. Good morning to, to our families. Uh, it's a pity we cannot be together in person, but uh, know that we're still able to connect virtually and we give thanks for, for the blessings of technology. So if you haven't figured out already, today is Trinity Sunday, which is, I believe, a special day in our calendar because it's where we think about something that isn't just a, an event, but is a core truth of our church, uh, a fancy word for that being a doctrine. So we gathered this morning to try and have a think about the Trinity, which is a word, a concept, an idea that many people who study the Bible all their life try to figure out and come to the end and still don't know. And part of having faith is being able to live with this mystery. So I want to share a bit of a disclaimer before I do the object lesson today. You see, the Trinity cannot be completely explained by me or really by anyone else at all, because we don't actually totally understand it. We use our human words to try and describe God, and it often just doesn't cut it. The Trinity is and always will be a bit of a mystery. So I'll do the best that I can, but remember that this comparison doesn't explain everything about God, who is creator, sustainer, and redeemer. Although the word Trinity does not appear in scripture, it is taught to us many different times throughout the Bible with different passages. And you see, we have to remember that God is a very big idea to understand. And God is very big in God's own right. But we don't need to understand everything about the mysteries of God to be able to love God and to serve God with our hearts and to know that God loves us. Because of that love, God shows God's self to us in different ways. Now, the word Trinity, it's just a fancy word really for the, for the number three, you know, from the bit at the beginning, tri, like a tricycle or a track, something that has three wheels, something a triangle that has three sides. So I don't want you thinking that God is simply going to be like this thing in the analogy, because God is far bigger than any of us can actually begin to explain or understand. But we're going to do our best and, and, as usual, have a bit of fun. So let me just adjust my camera screen. Okay, uh, let me slide you back. So today we have an apple. Uh, now, I'm sure we've all eaten an apple before. Kelly, you've had one? Oh, look, a little. Yeah, no, we're or, or an Oreo? <laughs> Very much like an apple. They're both fruit. Indeed, yes. For those that don't know, one of Kelly's uh, nephews or nieces thought that uh, Oreo was the same classification as fruit when they were over one day. So it's become a running joke. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you see, the key with this apple is it might not look particularly special. And I mean, when I've prayed to God, I certainly haven't thought of an apple. Have you, Kelly? No, not really. No. I mean, many images come to mind when you say the word God, but I don't think Apple would be at the top of them. Now, let's have a look. There's actually three parts to the Apple, but not all of them are visible and not all of them are necessarily understandable how they work, a little bit like God. So let's cut the Apple in half. And I do want it noted for evidence that I did cut on a chopping board, not directly on a table. Now, let's have a look inside. You see... In, so on the outside, we have the skin. On the inside, we have the flesh. And then on the further on the inside, we have got the seeds. Now, all three parts of these apple exist at the same time as each other. They're all there together. Even if we can't see all of the bits, we still know that every apple contains an outside, a middle, and then some seeds. And in this sense, it's sort of like God. Now, you see... You know, we can't come along and peel God, right? So there are definitely problems with this analogy. But we have to remember that God exists outside what we can actually understand. And you see how here the skin, right, is on the outside of the apple, and it actually protects it. So I don't know if you've ever peeled an apple and then you've left it out, it starts to turn brown. But the skin is important to be able to actually protect it and keep the apple fresh. And then inside, right, the flesh, the, the white stuff here, that protects the seeds in the core in the middle. And you see, so they all have got their own job that they need to do in protecting each other and keeping each other whole. And then the seeds are the things that bring you life. 
Well, do you know what? God does the exact same thing. The qualities of God that we see in the Trinity are a protector, uh, is someone who sustains us and feeds us, and someone who gives new life and creates. And all parts exist together in the apple. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty cool. And while we won't know everything, we can at least have a bit of a think about the things around us that maybe we see have got three parts in one and we might be able to have a think at home. And if anyone's got any ideas, they can put them in the chat and share them as well. But for now, I'll hand back over to, to Kel. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Zach. And that's so true. I do love that every analogy we have mildly falls short, but that is a beautiful example. And if anyone has any others, please feel free to pop them in the chat. What a good idea. Yep, and I'll be eating some apple now. Uh, enjoy, enjoy, absolutely. Um, we are going to jump right back into our um, worship. worship again. We're going to jump back into some musical worship. I'm hoping. Ooh, let's see. Let's see if this uh, has clicked over well. I'm waiting for that screen just to make sure that it's there. And no. And this is why I always check. And no. Right, time for more jokes? No, not time for more jokes. It's just me needing to do the technology side that we all love very well. Sorry, guys. And hopefully this one works for us all. Let's give it a go. Perfect. All right, let's worship together.
And so let us share in the message that is for this morning. And you guys get me today. Sorry, in case you haven't picked up on it yet, uh, welcome to Trinity Sunday. <laughs> and what makes this Sunday super significant is that it's a rare day in the church's calendar where we recognize a doctrine of the church rather than an event or ritual. So Trinity Sunday is not like Easter. It's not like Pentecost, which was last week. And it's not even like Transfiguration Sunday. Because today we're sharing about a belief rather than trying to unpack a moment or an event. And this is why we find it hard to uncover all the deep mysteries that are held within the relationship of the Trinity. And often, as Zach has mentioned, all we're ever left with is metaphor and analogy. In scripture, we're told about the Trinity by a collection of people sharing their experience of God. And through all of these experiences, there were common characteristics that we can see and we still experience them. They were so common and so frequent enough that they were even nameable. And so we call them God, Jesus and Holy Spirit, all equal in name, function and worthiness. And so when we come to the readings that were given today, this is exactly what is shared across all the lectionary pieces that we get. So each reading helps us to unpack something new about God's nature. Whether we read them as something sharing more of who Jesus is, more of who God is as creator, or more about the nature of Holy Spirit in someone's life. When we look at the reading that Zach shared with us this morning, we're given a moment in time back when Uzziah was king in the book of Isaiah. Now, King Uzziah was seen as an amazing king. He was someone who offered stability for his people and many of them prospered under his rule. And even when he overstepped in his ministry in many ways and the last 10 years of his throne was having to be overseen by his son, Jotham, he was still believed to be a king who was a sign of hope for the Israelite people. And in that overstepping, he did some, he did some bad things. But why this is important to share specifically about Uzziah and his nature was because this reading that we have today in Isaiah 6 is when we start hearing this story take place when King Uzziah has, has died. And before this moment, in the book of Isaiah, we hear that he prophesies that the Israelite people are going to be invaded and thrown into exile by the Assyrians. Their king, King Uzziah, the one who has given them hope, stability and prosperity is dead. The Israelite people are filled with hopelessness and despair and the person who gave them that comfort and security is now no longer there. And in this moment, chapter six gives us a glimpse into this weird and mystical vision where Isaiah has a conversation with God and the seraph or seraphim, depending on your translation. And that's this angel-like figure. And these weird and supernatural stories that we get in scripture are some of my favorites because we're opened up into this imagery that we'd often reserve for a fiction section in a bookstore. What people often do not know is that through the Bible, there are a lot of reference to angels and they appear in very many different ways. They're given many different names and they all have different purposes. The most common way that an angel appears in scripture for us to read is actually by a person walking into scene. Yep, <laughs> something not so magical at all. But rather, it's about someone who has a message that they need to share. Other times, we get images of angels like archangels, cherubim, or sephirim, like this story that we've got today. And so when we hear about sephirim, 
it's important to remember what they represent. They have to shelter both of their feet with one set of wings and their eyes with another set of wings. Because even in their most majestic state, God is more holy than even they are. In the story that Isaiah shares, even these mythical creatures have to humble themselves before God. The word seraphim or seraph comes from that same translation word as fire. Hence why we're shared and opened up into this whole scene around the coal upon our lips. These mythical creatures are literally on fire for God. They have a passion that points towards the goodness and worthiness of who God is. And so we're given a story where we are reminded of an important characteristic about God, particularly because of the death of King Uzziah. The Israelite people have forgotten about who is really their comfort and security in all worthiness and glory. And so we get shared this line. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. If you are a churchgoer and this phrase sounds awfully familiar to you, it's because we say something very similar to this each time we share in communion with one another. Of course, that is next week. So make sure you keep an ear out for it as we share in declaring who God is among the world. God is holy and the whole world is full of their glory. Now, when we hear this story, I started to think and realize that this chapter in Isaiah is really important about asking questions around context. Because the reason we hear about these characteristics of God's nature is because of what was happening in the time. And so it got me asking a question. What is currently happening in our world today that shapes how we talk about the characteristics of God's nature? And what do we even share with other people about our faith at all? Recently, I've had an amazing time starting a conversation with someone who has not been brought up with faith at all. And I mean at all. Them nor their parents have had anything to do with not only the Christian faith, but any religious community. Of course, because I love Jesus and I work in a church, it is hard for faith not to come up in conversation. But what became evidently clear is that even things that we as churchgoers think are common knowledge are just not. I was asked questions like, what's a gospel? Who's Paul? Who's Moses? Who's Abraham? It became really clear that we do not know how to explain who God is to people today because the words and the names and the languages that we use is only understood by people inside the church. And what is the point of that? One thing that was made abundantly clear is that often people do know about who God is, who Jesus is, and who Holy Spirit is. They might not know about the word Trinity, but they have heard of all three. And what is even more miraculous is that somehow they even know that it has something to do with the faith story that we as Christians have to share or that we're at least fumbling and trying to share. And so what is it that we're saying to them? And what is it that we're trying to say about God, Jesus and Holy Spirit? What is currently happening in our world today that's shaping how we talk about the characteristics and God's nature? So perhaps maybe it's about unpacking past traumas that the church has caused people. Or perhaps it might be being Christ-like in our world and what that might actually look like today by doing some truth-telling, challenging our political systems that continue to oppress and marginalise people. Perhaps it might be sharing the transformative experience that we have experienced so that we can do nothing else but help others experience that transformation for themselves. Maybe in us sharing our transformation, they might be able to see. 
Maybe it's even about sharing the challenges amongst ourselves, trying to find ways that we as the church can grow to become more inclusive, more accepting, more unconditional for those around us, finding those words and natures that we read in scripture and living them out in our reality day to day so that people can see the nature of God. I am sure there are many other things that we could say about our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. And I really encourage you to spend some time writing them down and reflecting on them. And maybe if you have them, you can even write them in our text chat as well. These things are really important, and it's important that we share them with others when the time is right. And even if we start sharing them with someone right now, I really encourage you to think about what these mean for ourselves when we talk about God's nature and the impact that they have for our faith. When I want to end this, or now I want to end this sermon today, I actually want to continue it through with an affirmation of faith for us all to share together. And so I'm going to pop it up on the screen for us. And in your homes, let us all share it in unison with one another. And it's a way for us to join in and declare this message together that the Trinity is not just a thought or a process, but it's something that's held deeply within our faith and that we can share and believe and feel. And it actually helps us to understand, know and communicate the nature of who God is with the people today. So let us do that with one another. And I'm just going to quickly get it up on the screen for us all. So I'm going to trust that this works. So let us say it together. We believe in a loving God who is life's breath for all of earth's creatures, who is the ground in which our lives flourish, who is the mystery toward which we are drawn. We believe in the risen Christ, whose life is the way we see God made real, whose death bears witness to the power of love, whose presence nourishes our spirits each day. We believe in the Holy Spirit who flows as a refreshing spring of life, who comes as divine fire to energize the faithful, who creates communities of joy and justice. And there isn't much else that we can say to that other than amen. And so let us continue in singing in our worship this morning, God of all creation. So join in at home if you can.
Hmm. Sorry about that. We are going right into our offering right now. And so, of course, we are not in person. So if you would like to find ways to share your offering uh, with the church this morning, then feel free to go online to our website. Um, and there is a button that says support us and that will link you to a page that shares with you our direct debiting details and then you can actually give ways to support our activities and programs such as chaplaincy our ministries um, and our mission and services so that we can help others outside of our church community um, so that's there feel free to do that in your own time um, we're going to jump right into our notices and reminders and as we do this please feel free to type in the text chat any prayers that you might have or anything that you would like to share more widely with the church community. And when we get to that moment, we will join those in together in our prayers. So next week is Communion Sunday. All going well, we should be in person. If all is happening in the current context, I will see you back here on Zoom. Um, and we're going to be talking about a topic called the mercy seat and you'll be having me preaching again and I know that you cannot wait. It is going to be a good week. Um, I don't know what was with my crab hands just then but we're going to go with it. Uh, we also have decided to just postpone our church council election just till we gather again in person. It's much easier to gather our election ballots when we have that option um, we also have put Bible study on hold um, until we resume again on Thursday, the 10th of June. So that's um, the Thursday night Bible study. Um, Coffee with Jay um, will resume again when it's permitted. So those who have usually uh, coming along to that on Fridays, um, we will make sure that you have been contacted. They have been contacted already, but don't rock up in case you decided that this was the week you were going to come and hang out, not this week. We will resume when it's permitted again. Um, so the Lyft Breakfast Group, it is still to be confirmed whether they're going to meet at Cafe Del Mar at 9 on Saturday the 5th. Um, and that's because it is just out of lockdown. So Mary Lou is our contact point there. Um, and if you would like to know, then definitely be in communication with Mary Lou, but it is still to be confirmed whether that is a go ahead. In case you haven't heard, we're doing a winter shelter program. So for 12 weeks starting in July, um, we are going to be looking at ways that we can help care for those who be sleeping rough in the winter weather. So there are more details in the pew sheet. The pew sheet is up already on the church website. So if you didn't get it in the emails, but you would like to have a copy, jump on marambinauniting.org.au and you can find it in the drop down links there. Um, so joys and concerns. This is a perfect time. We have awesome space. Oh, yes, perfect. People are writing in. So, Shaz, absolutely. Prayers for Kathy and the Pearson family um, as their daughter is unwell and in hospital, and that's always really hard. Um, Marg, I'm going to take that as a joy. I am so glad that you're looking forward to hearing me preach next week, so thank you for that joy. Um, Dave, thank you for your prayer hands as well. Absolutely. Um, Zach. Have you got anything on your end at all about joys or prayers or concerns? Um, Jay, yes, absolutely, 100%. We really want to pray that Jay and Bruce get a negative result for COVID test so they continue their holiday. Um, and I really want to pray that it's restful and enjoyable and rejuvenating for you because um, that's, that's the purpose of a holiday and I really want that to be that space for you both. Anything else I might give it? A couple of moments so we'll run through these prayer points and requests that we have while we can think of some others so we have happy birthdays to our main birthday people um, we think specifically about Marg Reed about Bruce about Heather and her family which is perfect um, because Heather has just put in there um, for prayers for her daughter Amelia and the family as she still grapples with difficult treatment um, we want to pray for Marg Hicks 
Tay Alfred and her family, Shaz Sturk as well. Um, we want to pray uh, for, oh, oh, it's a joy and also a sadness. So Marg has written that um, Lily, her granddaughter, it's her ninth birthday today, which is a joy, but also it's really sad because the birthday had to be cancelled because of lockdown, which is always so hard during this time. Um, and we also have, yes, Zach. We've had a prayer request from uh, Alison and Paul uh, for prayer for their friend Rod. Oh, lovely. We'll definitely keep Rod in our prayers as well. Absolutely. We have our presbytery prayer calendar, which has allowed us to pray for our Mount Eliza village congregation. So it's called The Village. It's in Mount Eliza. And the minister there is Cam McAdam. And the ministry team is Shona Potts and also uh, Tim Gordon. So I really want to pray for them and that their ministry is going well. And we also have our assembly prayer points, which of course, are really allowing us to lead into Reconciliation Week. So Assembly asks us to pray for truth-telling and healing in our church and the nation as we acknowledge the wrongs of the past and injustice based today by our First Nations people, and that still continue today. And we also have been asked to pray um, for a peaceful and just solution to the political tumult, 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 oh, I can never say that word, tumult in Samoa, uh, may it emerge from this crisis, a stronger and united country. And of course, that the Church of Scotland, um, as its General Assembly meeting takes place online this week, um, and for the guidance of God's love, wisdom and hope. Um, we all know worship is a whole different ball game when we are online. And it is exactly the same when it comes to our meetings, uh, particularly assemblies um, and gatherings. So definitely prayers for those as well. So all of these prayers that we have written across the board and we've verbalised out loud, let us take a moment to take them to God in prayer. Um, so keep them on our hearts and keep those unspoken on our hearts as well. Um, and let us gather them all with our words and let's pray. Lord God, we just want to pray for our hurting world. The war makers will find peace, that the hungry will find food, that refugees will find shelter, that injustice will be answered and that we can act to find ways that are right and good. We pray for those who suffer, for all those who we love dearly, particularly those who we have named from birthdays through to those being, uh, who are sick, through to those who we care and love, through to those who we have heard of and about. We pray for those who we have ignored and who need your healing and loving hand. We pray that your presence will be known by those in need and that your spirit will comfort, comfort and protect. And we continue this prayer with one another as we say in the prayer that you have taught us together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And so as we go into this week, May we be reminded of our God who is one and three and three in one. And may we have moments where we can take time just to breathe in and breathe out. That we can recognise that God is a forgiver, a mover and a lover. And that we can have time to share that knowledge and nature with one another wherever we meet with people in our day. Let us continue praising God. God, give hope to lift you up. Guide you in the pathways of peace. Fill you with joy to brighten the dark. And fold you in love and guide you through day.
We do have a Zoom morning tea happening. Um, it was sent out in your pew sheet emails this week. If you didn't get the link, then send me a message. You can send it via Facebook to me um, or email or a text message um, or send it, I'm sure, to anyone in the church. I will find a way to get that link to you. Um, and it starts in ooh, five minutes. So we'll see you soon. And that was a very abrupt ending, but I really hope that you enjoy your week. <laughs> See you all for morning too. Definitely. See you soon. <laughs>